so the problem is that the moment you encounter drag divergence mark number the drag is increasing because of the shock wave and its effects so we call this as a wave drag it is not because of viscosity effects it is not because of friction it is because of the presence of this shock wave okay so what is it let us have a look it is a component of drag at transonic or supersonic speeds why do i say transonic speeds because the critical mark number normally is normally why always it is a mark number below 1 because if the free stream mark number itself is 1 then sonic conditions are going to be there in the leading edge only and that is not the critical mark number because be much below that already we have had acceleration of flow so it is independent of viscous effects that is the important point okay so it is seen as a sudden rise in the drag with Mach number and the shock wave radiates considerable energy okay, and that is what is manifesting itself in terms of drag. So, let us see why we have this phenomena. Now, if you go to supersonic flow and let us say we took a wedge body. So, on the upper surface we will have p more than p infinity on the bottom we will have p less than p infinity. So, the wave drag will be the net drag due to the higher pressure behind the shock wave. The shock wave will manifest itself right from the leading edge in supersonic flow and the angle of the shock wave will be a function of the Mach number sin inverse 1 by m. Okay. So, you know you may not know, but you can assume right now uh, this is a, a topic that is covered normally in basic gas dynamics. Uh, pressure, temperature and density are going to increase, but velocity and Mach number are going to decrease. The total pressure and temperature are going to remain constant. So, if you take a flat plate and give it a little bit of angle and submerge that in supersonic flow, m infinity more than 1. So, what will happen is that flow comes along these lines and because it is going to encounter bending downwards there will be an expansion wave through which pressure is going to reduce. On the bottom there will be a shock wave, okay. there will be a shock wave on the bottom and then at the end again the flow has to straighten. So, there is going to be an expansion wave. So, an expansion wave can be considered to be as something like an opposite or a corollary of the shock wave. Okay. So, if you see the pressure distribution, the pressure distribution will be such that you will get a net upward pressure and that is what is the generator of lift and this particular net pressure also has got a component on the back side which is the drag. Okay. So, if you, if you actually minimize the shock wave or the drag because of the shock wave, you should use a very thin leading edge or a very thin profile or you should use a sharp leading edge because that results in weaker shock waves and hence lower drags. Okay. Now, let us look at thin aerofoils. For example, in this particular aircraft called as the F uh, Lockheed 104 Starfighter. Okay. So, the value of uh, Cl in supersonic flow can be approximated as 4 alpha by root of n square minus 1 where alpha is the angle of attack and the wave drag will be 4 alpha square. Now, these two expressions can be derived by you looking at simple gas dynamic equations applicable for supersonic flow. I do not want to do that. I wanted to talk more about uh, some other aspects. So, I am not uh, spending time in the class on that, but you can look up yourself. Okay. So, let us see how we tackle the wave drag. This is of more importance to us. So, if there are thin objects like a thin aerofoil or a thin wing and if you fly at sonic supersonic conditions because they are thin they lead to a weaker disturbance and uh, thicker objects like me are going to have higher m infinity uh, I mean higher effects uh, thicker shock waves, stronger shock waves which you fly at supersonic conditions. So, what is the solution? The solution is that you 
change the angle at which the air is facing the free stream. Okay. So, you have a, an example of three wings in front of you. So, when you provide sweep, we will discuss in detail about sweep. The other way is that you use thin wings. So, the wings which are used on very high speed aircraft actually have a very small T by C. T by C ratio would be 4 percent, 5 percent, never more than that, okay. perhaps 8 percent. Then you can also go for shaping of the fuselage, which also helps in reducing wave drag as we will see very soon. And finally, you could do proactive reduction in wave drag by putting some bodies or some, uh, they are called as Cookman carrots or Cookman bumps. Uh, these are given by an aerodynamicist who was the chief designer of the Concorde aircraft, the chief aerodynamicist of Concorde aircraft. Uh, he has given these bodies and he has found out that if you present these bodies and if you shape them properly, then actually you can lead to lower drag in transonic and supersonic flight. So, we can also use anti shake bodies and finally, we can use supercritical aerofoils which are designed to reduce the wave drag by giving a geometry, reflex trailing edge. Okay. So, these are the solutions, let us see one by one how these solutions are implemented. In the future. Just a video to show you how one can have a transonic flight even at low altitude. So, why are you able to see this cloud of air over the wing and below the wing? What is the reason? Yes, why are we able to see it? Why do not we normally see this kind of a thing when you have an aircraft flying? And why could you see in this particular flight? Yes. Uh, I am Pratik, Pratik uh, yes. because of the humidity. So, if you fly in Mumbai city, you will always see clouds over the aircraft. Compared to uh, the sea level. Yeah, so Mumbai is very humid, right? We have 70, 80 percent humidity. Which means you go to Santa Cruz airport and stand every aircraft in Mumbai is going to have a cloud over and above. No. Is it true? No. So, it is not just humidity, okay, that is what I wanted to clarify. Not humidity alone, okay. Anybody else would like to add? Yes. Please pass on the mic. Yes. So, my name is Ashwari. Yeah. And uh, it is due to the fact that the local pressure is quite low. So, the c condensation of the water vapor which is present inside the air just condenses and we uh, we uh, see it in the form of that uh, uh, cloud. Okay. So, does this condensation take place only at low altitudes? Uh, uh, sir, uh, it may t take place at various uh, places like uh, where humidity is present basically and uh, uh, more often it uh, likely to take place at low altitude while taking a take off and landings okay where humidity is present basically yeah so then you come to the same point mumbai always has high humidity so, so sir then? we can also encounter it uh, here also in fact uh, uh, in uh, in our previous lecture we saw a video in which uh, aircraft was landing and there was a cl Correct. cloud on but that. my question is if it is only because of humidity and only because of low pressure then we should always see it when we have an aircraft taking off and landing in Mumbai. No sir, it should have sufficient velocity so that the local pressure should, should be low. Correct. So, do you think this aircraft is flying at a very special speed that normally planes do not fly? Do you think that aircraft at Mumbai do not take off and land at such speeds? So, mere presence of humidity is not the reason, there is something else. Think about it, think about it, okay. Maybe we can get the answer on Moodle. Do you, you, do you understand my question? I am not saying your answer is wrong, but I am saying by your argument, we should always see it in Mumbai, which has got an extremely high humidity. But when I go to the airport, I take so many flights, very rarely I see it. So, there are certain conditions under which I see. 
okay the reasoning is not correct the information is correct yes it is because of loss of uh, lower pressure yes it is there because of the condensation of water vapor in the atmosphere these two are correct but the reasoning that you are giving that it is because of humidity then i can counter and say that we should always see it so it's fine it's better that we get the answer on the moodle okay oh where lies the answer <laughs> so it depends on also the temperature that is there in the surrounding areas if you have humidity but high temperature such as we have in mumbai in mumbai what is the condition in mumbai isa plus 15 right we saw it in the presentation if you go to a place where there is humidity but temperature is isa minus 10 or isa minus 15 there is a greater chance of seeing it so the surrounding temperature also is important for you to get the condensation condensation takes place always in low temperature right so maybe if you go to leh airport in winter okay you might be able to see on a humid day or if it is raining or there is a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere on a very cold place but then leh has a problem of high altitude where density is less so then it becomes a very complicated thing okay so the issue is that if you have very high drag because of the wave drag then you have high fuel consumption and the solution is sweep swept wings which we will see the other solution is area rule or giving a very interesting a uh, shape to the fuselage waste now how this was obtained and what is the science behind it is explained in a nice video so i thought i'll just show you the video until chuck yeager and the x1 flew through the sound barrier on october 14th 1947 the sound barrier had finally been broken but there it was what i call a brute force approach in the sense that your rocket just rammed that airplane through the speed of sound but the drag was so high that they used up all the fuel in just about 5 minutes so it was not practical supersonic flight but it did accomplish the breaking of the barrier there needed to be a more efficient way to break the speed of sound dick whitcom set out to find a way whitcom found that when a plane reached near supersonic speeds the drag around the wings would increase by as much as a factor of 5 He saw that much like a bullet, the fuselage was extremely aerodynamic without the wings, but when the wings were added, an aerodynamic bump was causing incredible amounts of drag that was slowing the plane down. It became obvious to him that he had to find a way to take the bump out of the equation. Whitcomb's tests showed that when he added the entire area of wings and fuselage together, the drag or aerodynamic bump was exactly the same as the drag of a fuselage with wings. He worked tirelessly to find a solution. When one day as he was thinking about the problem, the solution hit him like a bolt of lightning. He must indent or pinch in the waist of the fuselage. This new shape of the fuselage would closely resemble the shape of a Coke bottle. Whitcomb was astonished to find that by changing the shape of the fuselage, he took the bump out of the equation and allowed the plane to become as aerodynamically smooth as a fuselage without wings. This very simple fix came to be known as the area rule. I had the idea. Then we built some models to try and demonstrate it. We built uh, airplanes with the Coke bottle state shape fuselages and lo and behold the drag of the wing just disappeared. So this is uh, Dr. Nas uh, Dr. Richard Whitcomb from NASA who gave us Whitcomb aerofoils as well as the area rule. so what he said just now is that when they were trying to design aircraft to fly faster and faster they found that as you approach sonic speeds the fuel consumption increases so much so that you would consume the entire fuel in only 5 minutes of flight that means it is impractical to design an aircraft so he found that if you take just the fuel large it's very good aerodynamically in supersonic flight but the moment you add wings it creates huge amount of wave drag so the first experiment he did was suppose i distribute the area of the wings over the fuselage and make it like a bulged fuselage so he found that the drag of a fuselage 
with the bulged center equal to the area of the wing is equal to the drag created by the aircraft plus the wing. So, that way he figured out that it is something to do with the sudden increase in the area of the cross section as you come towards as you as you um, go along the length. So, with that he got this idea one day not through any scientific reasoning or through any calculations, but just looking at the results and he says what do I do so that I do not get a sudden bulge in the area of cross section as I go along the length. So, that the answer is that you reduce the area of the fuselage or the cross section area of the fuselage. So, he just figured out that the, the place where you have a wing or a tail if at that place locally you reduce the area of cross section of the fuselage so that the net area of cross section is not changing rapidly then you will not get high wave drag and then they verified it by wind tunnel testing and finally we had the area rule and it was applied then to the design of many aircraft and once that was done it was possible to create realistic aircraft like this conveyor F102 which could fly comfortably supersonic for a reasonable amount of time. So, this one discovery opened the way or opened the path for high speed flight in aircraft. The other important thing is sweeping the wings. Okay. So, let us see how sweeping the wings is going to be beneficial. For the sweep back we have to thank Dr. Adolf Guzman okay. and uh, Dr. Adolf Guzman is a person who first gave the idea that we can encounter or we can, uh, we can. So, he was the first one to observe the creation of shock waves, he was an experimentalist and then he realized that the, the air over the wing or the drag effects of air over the wing are dominated not by the free stream velocity, but by the velocity perpendicular to the wing. This is an observation. So, he found he, he just figured out that what is important is not the free stream Mach number or the free stream speed, but the speed normal to the wing and if the wing is unswept then those two speeds are equal. So, with this he got the idea that can we take the wing behind so that the free stream component the, or the free stream velocity can have two components a normal component and a span wise component. So, this is called as sweep the dotted line is unswept or normal uh, aircraft wing and the one on the back is the swept wing and then when needed you can bring it forward. So, along the lateral axis you provide an angle called as a sweep angle and also remember it need not be only back it may also go forward. So, what we have to provide is an angle between the lateral axis and the wing center line or a wing reference line it could be behind sweep back or ahead sweep forward both of them are aerodynamically identical. That means, both of them are going to reduce the wave drag because both of them are going to create a component along the normal to the wing span lesser than the free stream component. But the difference is in a sweep back the component along the wing is going to be outwards and in sweep forward the component along the wing will be inwards and that makes a big difference plus there are other interesting differences also which we will tap.